Hey everybody and welcome to my weekly wrap up. Um, this week I read 14 books, although I'd really say it was more like 11 and then there was three novellas in there, but y'all, they were some good novellas and I read the majority of historical romance this week, I'd say, with a few fun ones thrown in and including one of my new favorite historical romances that, you know, is many people's favorite and I'm finally on the bandwagon and I'm very happy about it. So let's go ahead and start with at the top of the week and continuing my journey through the Mackenzie and McBride series by Jennifer Ashley. I read book number seven, which was Rules for a Proper Governess. This is about Scottish barrister Sinclair McBride. Um, so he's basically a lawyer, but he's like an interesting kind of lawyer. I don't fully understand the difference between a barrister and a lawyer, but the way that he explains it is that he's kind of like the, uh, I feel like he works for the crown, but also he is more interested in justice than what the crown wants. So if he sees that someone is innocent and being accused of something, he will fight for them. And that is how we meet him. So our main, our, our woman, Roberta Fraser, Birdie, she is there because one of her, I think it's her friend, or it might be her little sister, I think it's her friend, is accused of murder. And the person who really did it is her dad's friend. <laughs> and she knows that her friend is going to hang for this because she ended up with blood on her dress. She was caught in the room with the person. And really, it was this other guy and this maid had stumbled across the body. And then they just did a quick fix and, like, blamed her for it. And Barrister McBride, he is really able to pick that shit apart. And he saves this girl from death. And so... Birdie has her eye on him. She thinks he's pretty sexy. She thinks he's really cute. And she makes the mistake of making a comment about him in front of her dad. And so her dad tells her to steal something from him. I'm going to put this book down now because it's shining and you don't need to see it. Um, her dad um, says go steal something from him. And so she knows that she'll be beaten if she doesn't steal something from him. So she does a little bump and grab from him and steals his watch. But this is a watch that his wife gave him. And so Barrister McBride, Sinclair McBride, who is the older brother of um, Ainsley, who married Cameron. Yes, married Cameron McKenzie. Um, and is also Elliot's brother and like he's one of the McBrides. And so he has two young children and his wife had died um, from a fever or something like that. And so he's been a widower for the past few years. And so anything else, he wouldn't have mind being stolen, but this watch, it was from his wife. So he chases after her to stop her from getting away with stealing it. And she leads him into this trap, but then she has pity on him and she stops it, and so he's like, you can take something else from me. He gives her a gold sovereign instead, which is, like, worth more than the watch. And he basically, like, lets her go. And Birdie, after this moment of generosity and seeing, like, the depths of this guy, she starts stalking him. And she also is, like, watching his children, too. And his children, you know, it's the classic case of, like, the widower's children or the ward's children misbehaving. And so he has two children, and their nannies, they're just going through nannies nonstop. And the nanny, like, leaves right when Andrew, the little boy, gets into trouble. Birdie's able, able to save him. And then the nanny is like, bring the children home, I quit. And so Bertie brings the children home and then Sinclair runs into this woman again who he thought he'd never see again. And she also rescued his children. So he, she has a good rapport with the children, which nobody else seems to have. And so he makes her slash makes a deal with her to be his children's governess until he can find someone better. And then the story is 
there's nobody better than her. And it was beautiful. Um, next I listened to on Audible Escape, but I also have a copy of So Over You by Kate Meter. This is book two in the Chicago Rebel series. I actually haven't read the first one because I ordered these from Thriftbook and I thought I was getting books one and two and I actually got books two and four. But I was able to find this one on Audible, so I bought it. This is about a female-owned hockey team. These three sisters own this hockey team together. And one of the owners, she made a run at the Olympics. She went to the Olympics when she was very young and she almost died at the Olympics. She took up the blade of a skate to the head. And so now she's a coach slash partial owner. And the skater that she needs to coach is Vadim Petrov, who she had a fling with when she was 18 years old. He was her first sexual partner. And then her dad found out and almost ruined his career. So now he is back under her influence again. She's the coach who's supposed to help him regain his strength after an injury to rehabilitate. And this is a second chance romance and it's so sexy. I listened to this on Audible Escape and the narrator, the voice, because he's Russian, the voice she does for him is so sexy. I loved it so much. So do yourself a favor and listen to this book if you can, because it was amazing. So then after that, I read Undone by You, which is a novella based on the same team. And it's based on the, I think it's the manager who, this was super cute. So he's like 40 years old, or no, he's 35. And he is a gay man, he's out. He used to be a player. Um, not like he used to be a hockey player and now he's like, I think he's a manager for the Chicago Rebels and one of the players who's young, he's only 23, he has the hots for this guy and he's actually had the hots for him since he was like a player and he had like, you know, posters of him and was a fanboy of him. And he, so he's not like out to his family yet. He just has his father, his mother has died, and but he really has the hots for this guy. So he goes up to him at a gay bar because he knows that he goes to this gay bar and he hits on him. And obviously this guy's really resistant, number one, because uh, literally like this kid doesn't have a lot of experience yet. He feels like maybe he's looking more for an older gay mentor than a boyfriend. And also there's a big age gap and also he's his boss. So all of those things don't lead for this being a great situation, but they do lead to angst, sexy, dirty time, and a really hot male, male romance. So that one I read on Kindle. I think I was able to borrow for KU or I might have had to buy that one. I don't remember, but it was a novella. I think I was able to rent it from KU. But either way, it was really cheap if I didn't because it was a novella. Um, super sexy, still loved it. Then I got to read Charming Like Us by Kristen Becker Ritchie. Came out, woo! This is the first new release since I've been reading this series because I started reading the Like Us series. I've talked about this before. I'm thinking of doing a deep dive video on Kristen Becker Ritchie. There's just like three books left that I need to read until I've read them all. I have since like joined their Patreon and I'm so excited. They've announced that they are doing a total of five more books in this series and there's gonna, oh I'm just, I won't spend this whole video talking about it but I am so excited. So Charming Like Us is book seven in the Billionaires and Bodyguards series. This is a male male romance. This is the first one that's like not actually with a member of the Hathaway family because the other ones were like uh, Hathaway Cobalt or um, Meadows, one of their, one of the kids. This is actually with Oscar, who is Charlie Cobalt's bodyguard, and Jack, who is one of the filmers slash producers for We Are Callaway. However, if you haven't read any other books in the series, you could read this as a male-male romance if you wanted to. I don't completely suggest it, but these two were so cute. And this one is going to be like, uh, like they're not getting a second book as far as I know. So it's not one where you'd have to be completely like 
locked into it but I highly suggest you read anything by Kristen Becker Ritchie. Um, the Like Us series begins with Damaged Like Us which is also a male male romance and is amazing and then the books just build off each other and it's fantastic so I mean this was five stars so there's no question about it. I devoured it and then I became one of their patrons because at like literally the five dollar level you have all these bonus scenes access to and they do a monthly podcast and it's bananas good like it's so good I love it so then I read this is where we get into more of the historical romances I read I read Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson and this and the next book I'm going to talk about are both historical romances with BDSM where there is a female dominant and in both cases, said females are figuring that out about themselves. However, in Devil's Submission, we're dealing with a marriage in trouble situation. We have this character who they call him Dev. He, like, uh, is really wealthy in town. He runs a sex club with his friends. And he is a male submissive. And he carries a lot of shame about this. Um, there is a... Uh, dominatrix that he goes to see uh, pretty regularly who you know will help him with that of it but he's expected to be a dominant even in this club which should be very accepting and welcoming there's even like there's even stigma around that because he's one of the owners and he's supposed to be a dominant in this space and he does not want to like that doesn't get him off or please him to dominate other people now the marriage and trouble part of this is that he has a wife and they had kind of a whirlwind romance um, in the statement of like, I think it was at her coming out ball even that they had this like crazy night where they were dancing and he thought she was so beautiful and then they were out in a maze and like she was getting so sexually frustrated that she just like ordered him to start touching her. And that just like lit up all his lights and he was like, oh my God, this girl's like telling me what to do. I love it so much. This is what I want in a partner. And so when they got caught and they were like compromised, he was like, this isn't even a problem. Like I want to marry you. I would have asked for you anyway. You are who I've been looking for. And then she listens to her mother because her mother thinks that she's too loud and brash and bold. And so she listens to what society says. She's also, this is a, a, a plump heroine fat, whatever you want to say, whatever word is PC for you. I feel like as a fat woman, I can say that she's fat, but she's curvy, she's plump, whatever. And so she's also dealing with lots of shame in regards to that because she gets picked on for that all the time. And so she quickly loses that spark of dominance that devil loved about her so much. She tries to be submissive herself, which is like two submissives. Like it's just not sparking with them. So they quickly like fizzle out and he basically like sends her to the country because he's so devastated that that was like a tease to him and so her family is in kind of some monetary problems I don't want to give everything away this is only a 110 page book but like it was so good um and yeah I just loved it so much but something brings them back into each other's vicinity and she really wants to make their marriage work. And so she realizes in different situations, she stumbles across them, like what it is that is lighting him up. And then she takes some lessons and it's great. So if you want to test out, because this is what I did. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you, because I said there's another book I read now. Devil Submission is only 100 and like 10 pages. It's really quick. It was really sexy. I feel like I wish that it had been a full book, but I got this re suggestion from Faded Mates, and then they had suggested another book as well that was call is called um, The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. This one I found on Audible Escape, so you can listen to this one if you want to, and I think I had to buy the ebook though. Yeah, I bought the ebook of it. And so this one is a full-length novel, and this is about a girl who she wants to own... Like, she has her own nursery, and she wants to grow flowers and plants. She's like a botanist, and she wants, she has big, big plants. So she's a spinster, and she has slowly saved up her money so that she can, like, start this business. But the place that she lives, of course, they want her to have a husband. But the thing for her is if she gets a husband, 
all of this is ruined. Like, all of this is ruined for her because then anything she owns belongs to her husband and he has total control. So even if she were to love someone, she would never get married. So she has someone pursuing her. And then we have this guy who's come back into town to visit his sister and come back to his home. And he's a tortured hero. He's a little bit Rochester-y. That's kind of the vibes that I got from him a little bit. And they end up running into each other. There's sparks flying and... Oh, we forget. We know that he's a submissive from the jump because the very first line of the book is him going to see his dominatrix who whips him. But he doesn't have, like, well, he is, I mean, it's his mistress. But there's this club on Pleasure Street that he goes to that's run by this dominatrix. And there's, like, rules for how you get into it and stuff. Anyway. But through things or whatever, you know there's going to be a romance. He you know, doesn't plan that he could ever tell anyone his secret, that he likes to be abused. And this is also a case of him of like, this is a, this is, it's funny because in, in a lot of, there's like warnings that this is like super dark and twisty. And I think that's because if someone who likes historical romance stumbled upon this book, it would seem super dark to them. But if you like dark romance, this might be a good way to check out historical romance. Like, if you like dark romance, if you like BDSM, but you don't like historical romance, this could be a good way to try going the other way. Whereas if you like historical romance, but you are nervous about BDSM, this could be a good entry for you to go the other way because there's lots of, like, good explanations about what it is and things are explained really well and it's also nothing too shocking like it mostly is stuck to um like control is the main part of this and then some whippings there's nothing super crazy but anyway so these two end up like falling not falling in love but like she ends up compromised by him accidentally and then he offers for her and she is willing to stay compromised because she wants her business but it becomes really clear that it's too late like she lost it and because even if she would stay with her autonomy people are never going to respect her because some guy who's been pursuing her he thinks that he can just have her now because she's a ruined woman so she agrees to marry this guy um our hero and he is willing to give her anything that she wants because that's her thing she's like I would want it promise that I can have my business I want you to never interfere in my thing like all these things and he just gives her like she reads the marriage settlement that he gives her and he gives her everything because he feels bad that he ruined her and he's also needs an heir and also he doesn't think he's gonna love this woman and he just has oodles of money just all the money right and yeah and he's into BDSM and it's amazing and it's another case of like where with double submission we meet this marriage after they're already in the trouble whereas with them like they're always sparking off of each other and he's able to like they have really great sex with no elements of BDSM in it at all but then there's these moments because he he has, you know, they've made it clear that this is, like, transactional, but she loves him, and that's, like, she loves him, and she's like, I'm playing a dangerous game because I'm gonna be more and more in love with him, and he can't love me. This is one of my favorite historical tropes. Like, I eat, I eat the shit up when there's a tortured man who doesn't think that he's lovable or that he can't love. Like, he, he's been hurt so bad, he just thinks he can't love. God, I eat that stuff up. And so, Oh my god, I'm telling you everything. You know this, but I want you to try this book. And so there there are these moments where like they're having a fight and she has these like she is a really sexual woman even though she never has before him. And she just like is like you are worthless to me except for your dick. And she's like I just want you to sit down and I'm going to get what I need out of you and then you're going to leave. And he's so turned on. He can't even last like 30 seconds. And it's like, whew, whew. it's so sexy, guys. It's so sexy. And so it puts this little seed in him. It puts this little seed in him because he's like, what if, what if this woman can give me everything? 
Like, what if she can be what I want in a partner and she can command me? And I'll stop now, but holy crap. It's so good. It's so good. And it, I just want more historical dominatrix. Like, that's all that I want. And I think there's another one in this series that has that too. Because there's three books that all take place that are called, um, that are called On Pleasure Street. Or, like, they take place on Pleasure Street around this club, I think. And one of them is literally between, like, I think it's between, like, a working girl and a priest and I want to read it so bad because I'm so messed up like that so anyway I talked about that book way too long I'm making this take way too long but that's okay so then I read Raw by Bella Rora which has been on my list for a while um, this one uh, we had it's a stalker romance so this guy and this girl, when they're really little, they have this interaction and he spends his whole life. He literally makes his fortune because someday he wants to be worthy of her. But he makes his fortune through, you know, CD dealings. He's not quite the mob, but he's like a dirty businessman. And he stalks this woman and he saves her from getting assaulted at one point. And then they just start like banging in her apartment. And every night he comes and sleeps besides her and they have sex. And she hardly knows anything about him. Until he makes an offer for like her business and so then they get drawn into the business world together this is pretty good he has a pierced member which is awesome um there is a list on goodreads called pierced peckers just so you know if you want to look some of them up it's great um this is really dark and it says when you see it, it's like this isn't a love story this is the story of love gone wrong it's still a romance and the reason why love goes wrong is probably one of my least favorite tropes but this book was so hot i still gave it a 4.5 but i don't know that i'm gonna read the sequel because it ends with a trope that i hate that i hate 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 so i'm just gonna pretend that the book was perfect and stop before the epilogue happens because the epilogue sets up the next book and I don't want to read it. I deleted the second book. I don't want to read it, but I really did like this one. I just want to read it as its own thing and not go where it goes from there because I really hate the trope that happens. Then I finished The Shadow Wand by Lori Forrest. It's not like this took me forever. Um, I This book only came out at the beginning of June, but I feel like I've been waiting for it forever. This is book three in the Black Witch Chronicles. Um, I'm going to talk more about this in my monthly um, stats video because I'm going to talk about my top five. I've already talked too much and I still have some of the, like one of my favorite reads to talk about. But this continues the story. Black Witch Chronicles is a YA fantasy. I would call it almost new adult because there is some pretty graphic things in here. Um, the sex is definitely not more graphic than Sarah J Mass, but by this third book there is like a deep emotional connection and so I put this series in my favorite fantasy romance and I say this book continues that. Um, this book also has a trope in it that I do not care for. However, for the particular romance that I am rooting for and honestly that I have been rooting for since the beginning but I didn't think it was going to happen. Lori Forrest did it and it's like she has a line into my brain because I loved it but it hangs on a trope that I don't like to make it happen. Uh, but I really loved it. The cliffhanger for the demon, uh, the demon tide, I think it's gonna be called demon tide was epic and like I want to reread this series but I don't there are so many trigger warnings in this series like look them up like there's sexual assault there is racism there is um uh brutal killing like there is just so much and this society will drive you crazy like it will drive you crazy but I just know that the payoff of this series is going to be so epic that I am willing to suffer I'm willing to suffer, but love. Like, I gave this five stars. I was so addicted. I actually took, like, notes in it this time and, like, wrote on it because I just love it so much. It's so good. It's so good. Then there was another new release this week, Classified by um, Brooke Blaine and Ella Frank. This is book three and the final one in the Need First Feed. Is that the trilogy name? 
I can't remember, but it's the one that's like Top Gun, but it's two men, and I really like this. I gave it four stars, though, because it was just so sugary sweet, and I wanted more edge to it, and that's a personal preference. I really like that she does, like, the these two together, like, they do male-male romances, and they make the romance the fuck out of each other. Like, this was so sugary sweet and has the most fairy tale ending to a military romance you can imagine. And these guys are sexy as hell and you'll have a great time with this trilogy and now the whole thing's out so you can read it. But I just, it was making my teeth hurt and I wasn't into it while I was reading it, but I love them. So I really love the first two because there's a lot more angst in the first two books. So I like that. Then, I won't talk too much, I read His Scandalous Kiss by Sophie Barnes. This was only 3.5 read for me, and if you saw my Instagram story, you'll know it's because this kiss was not that scandalous. However, if you don't like smut in historical romance, if you want a good interest to historical romance, if you want a really good plot in a historical romance, this was good. But I feel like it didn't deliver what I was promised. So this book, we have Richard Hartley, who has exiled himself. He is a wounded hero. He has a big scar on his face. He was kind of abandoned in enemy territory and almost died. And he's made his way home, but he's been staying hidden because of his deformity. And this is fun because it's a little bit Phantom of the Opera, except he's not creepy. I promise you. There's nothing creepy about him. This is a wounded hero. He's dealing with a lot of trouble. His family, some of his family members know he's alive. Some of them don't. And they're trying to convince him to come back to society. Because number one, his scars ain't that bad. And number two, he's a great person and we want him back in society. But his family at Thorncliffe Manor, they're holding a masquerade ball. So, you know, it's a perfect chance for him to come out. And he meets Lady Mary, who loves to sing. And she meets him. He goes by the name Senor Antonio. And they meet. They have, like, insta-love happen. And then they keep having these meetings where they actually... There's actually a map in this book, which is cool, that Sophie Barnes did. And they're exploring this estate and they're finding all these cool things. And she loves to sing and he plays violin. So they will, like, meet up at night. And he says, please don't go out on your own. There's this one creepy guy who's following her around. So he's like, please don't go out on your own. And so he will meet her every night and take her somewhere where she can sing and singing is considered really scandalous and yeah and then things happen and like he really really likes her he wants to offer for her but face he's worried about his face and so but anyway this was not super sexy which I was hoping like look at this cover and the title and it just wasn't what I wanted but the story was super unique I'm leaving a ton of stuff out I'm leaving it vague and so my main complaint is that there wasn't any smut and I feel like it didn't deliver on that. So if the other things I've said are kind of interesting to you that like the kind of the tropes that I mentioned, I think you should give it a try. It just didn't deliver for me, but it could be the one for you. This could be the historical romance that has been everything you're wanting it to be. So then I listened to the novella Scandal and the Duchess by Jennifer Ashley. Um, this was one of the last novellas I had to listen to and this is about Rose Barclay who's a widow but her husband died like in uh, very soon after they married so her son, her son-in-law, her stepson, not son-in-law, stepson is trying to like invalidate her marriage and cheat her out of the inheritance and to make matters worse um, so she's dealing with that scandal and then Stephen McBride, who is the brother to Sinclair, who I mentioned earlier, the brother to Ainsley, he's a drunk and a gambler, and he stumbles out of his club one night, and he literally, like, falls into her crotch in public. And she's trying to avoid scandal, and he just, like, drops on her, and she smells good, so he's literally, like, rubbing his face on her. And when he wakes up, he's like, shit, I have totally embarrassed you, I'm so sorry, let's fake date until we figure out your family stuff, whatever. It was cute. It was great. If you're reading all these other books I mentioned, you're going to read that one too. It was fine. Okay, then I read Temptation by Ivy Smoke, which is the first book in the Hunted series. And this series, I'm freaking addicted already. I'm on the second book right now, even though it's a weird mix of 
It's funny. It's a weird mix of like, oh, what is it even like? I don't know. But it's this girl. She's a sophomore in college. She runs into this guy the first day of classes. Turns out to be her professor. Shocking, I know. And they have this connection like right away. And then she goes into class. Surprise, it's her professor. Um, this is her communications class. She's also super shy, so that makes it even harder. And these two, they keep running into each other at all these different times, and things escalate. And he's also a secret billionaire, so there's that. It's good. I'll have more to say about this probably in my next week's review when I've read the other three in the series, because yes, there's four books in this series, and they're all on Audible Escape. And all of the books are on KU. So there's no reason not to read them if you want to. All right, we're getting to the good stuff here. So I, today, the books that I finished, because I was waiting to film this till I finished them, I'll talk about the one first. So I just finished reading Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. I'm one of her patrons. We get early access to her e-arcs, and we're also, like, automatically approved for her e-arcs, which is the best decision I've ever made. I've only been a patron of hers for like two months now and I have never made a better decision in my life because she does these monthly shorts where like you get to see scene behind the scenes, like extra scenes from her characters. And now she's going to be giving her patrons are going to get her audiobooks that are going to be coming out late summer, early fall. And all of her new books, we're going to get signed paperbacks for them worth the $15 right there because I would be buying her paperbacks anyway. So check out her Patreon if you like Katie Robert because it is the best decision I've made. But this is a quick dirty. It's going to be Christmas in July. This book comes out July 29th, comes out the end of July. And I just, I literally read it in an hour and a half. It's a novella and the title is what it is. This couple is vacationing with their friend in Colorado and they decide to have a little sexy time for a Christmas present to each other. And it's fabulous. So good. God, I love her taboo. Touch of taboo is so good. And then the last book I want to talk about, I have a reading vlog that if it's not already up, it will be going up soon. And that is I Finally Read Dreaming of You by Lisa Claypes, which is the book of hers that most people talk about. This came out in 1994, and it is about Derek Craven and Sarah Fielding. And it is so fucking good, guys. <sighs> I was nervous because it's hyped, man. It's hyped. But I should have known, just as like Lord of Shadows taught me this month, these books are hyped for a reason. And the thing is, is that a lot of things that people consider problematic about romances written in the 80s and the 90s are things that I love in romances these days. Like, I love really domineering men. I love that more, like, push and pull. I love that society stuff. I love when people are just, oh, I love alpha males. I love all of these things. So I'm learning that I really like historical romances where this happens, except for Catherine Woodwist, where there's rape. There's no rape in this one. There is an attempted assault, but not by our hero. So... This book is about Derek Craven, who owns a gambling den. He is getting attacked one night by his jealous ex-lover. Um, she sends some men to attack his face because he's a very handsome, roguish man. And all the women want him. And when he leaves his current mistress, she is a vicious bitch. And she sends people to ruin his face. And Sarah Fielding, who is an author who studies and does research and is looking into the seedier side of London. So she knows all about Craven's Club. She doesn't know that this is Craven, but she shoots one of the men who is attacking him. Not just shoots him, she kills someone and saves Derek, takes him back to his club, finds out who he is, and she makes a little bit of a bargain with him that in return for saving him, which, I mean, she would have done anyway, that he will give her access to his club so she can talk to... The people who work there talk to the fancy ladies who work there, the, um, the whores who work there, and in return, he's like, okay, you can do this, but stay out of the public eye 
and you can do your research and then it's off from there and he is so tortured she's so amazing she's brave there is that like there is a masquerade ball in this one as well and oh and just as their love story escalates it is so good if you want to know more of my thoughts like you said check out that reading blog i Feel like it'll be coming out very soon i might do it as a double release even today because i was going to read like three historical romances and i ended up talking so much about this one that the vlog is already going to be a half an hour so i was like well i'll just do a reading vlog for dreaming of you and not put anything else in it and it'll be fine so that's what i'm gonna do but anyway those are all of the books that i read this week they were amazing Stay tuned tomorrow. My monthly wrap up is going to be coming. It's coming a little bit early just because I'm going to be away for the fourth. And yes, I'll be doing some reading, but the last three days of the month, but we'll just roll it into July because that's what your girl does. So thank you so much for watching. I put in new videos three to four times a week. If you want to watch some more of them, you can do it right now. Peace out.